I was a seminary professor for over 10 years with Western Seminary. Um, the headquarters is in Portland, that's the main campus. I taught at the San Jose Extension. And I met uh, many students, many fine people, in both in the counseling program and in the ministerial program. Now, oftentimes people would ask me, what is God looking for in someone who is going into the ministry? What should my motivation be? Well, in meeting these students, oftentimes there are some that was, uh, they were in a transition period. They had nothing better to do. For others, they thought this, uh, they've been in church and they thought this was, would be a fun career. For others, they loved studying scripture and it was uh, their desire to perhaps learn languages, learn theology, the Bible, to study scripture better. Even for others, it was to help people. Now, these were the motivations that people came uh, to, to seek out God, whether they should be in some form of ministry or parachurch ministry. But in the book of Colossians, chapter 1, and we're in verse 25, and we're going to go to 27, Paul gives his reason for being in the ministry. And I hope it helps you. I'm going to read it from the ESV version. It goes like this, verse 25, of which I became a minister according to the stewardship from God that was given to me for you to make the word of God fully known, the mystery hidden for ages and generations, but now revealed to his saints. To them God chose to make known how great among the Gentiles are the riches of the glory of this ministry, which is Christ in you, the hope of glory. Now, what's very interesting is that the Apostle Paul becomes a minister. And, and, and this is very, it's a very uh, uh, interesting point he's making here. When you understand his path, he, it wasn't what a decision that he himself wanted to make. He was basically chosen by God when God blinded him uh, momentarily to call him to be one of the greatest followers of Jesus Christ. But he becomes a minister, okay, for the stewardship to make the word of God fully known. Now, for some, they think, oh, this is great. Going to seminary, I'm going to learn the scripture, learn how to, uh, you know, do Bible study, learn how to write papers, give a sermon. But you know what? That's only the means to the goal. For the goal of understanding scripture is not for the sake of application of how to apply scripture to people's lives in a meaningful way today. Neither it is just to simply learn the Greek and the Hebrew and to be theologically correct. The goal of making scripture known is to reveal the mystery hidden for ages to understand the plan of God that God had always intended for this world. You see, it's more than just studying languages. It's really understanding the whole process of God in redeeming his world and humanity through Jesus Christ. You see, we don't sign up for ministry because it's fun or because it's so interesting or just because we, you know, we want to help people. We sign up to be a minister because we understand that it was the intention of God to always show his mercy through Christ to people in this world, the fallen world. And oftentimes as ministers, we forget this. We get uh, flooded or overwhelmed by the duties and administrative details that uh, surround ministry and modern ministry. Or we get overwhelmed by the number of people asking for our help, calls, emails, texts, endless. You know, these things we kind of do because they're sort of necessary evils in modern ministry. But we must always remember the real purpose of why we are doing this. We are part of the program of God from way, way, way past. And it's not to make Jesus Christ relevant to people today. Yeah, I mean, we're gonna to try to do that. But it's to make people understand that their time in life 
and their God that they are seeking was part of a ministry and a program for thousands of thousands of years in Jesus Christ. It's an honor. It's a great joy. Not because of what we do, but because of the message of Christ that we represent and we present to people. It is an old message. It is a message that brings glory to God. And as the Apostle Paul ends in verse 30, 27, it is the hope of glory.